Should we begin? Okay, I'll uh, start. So, um, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, the image of the city is the book that we're discussing today, which is written by uh, Kevin Lynch. So, this was a book which was very briefly um, uh, discussed last time during our discussions about uh, Edmund Macon. And uh, so, there was a brief discussion uh, post the lecture uh, regarding the methods that are adopted by Kevin Lynch for. Uh, reading a city or a, a diagramming a city. So we'll talk a little more uh, about it in detail today. Uh, yeah. So this was a, a book which was written in the 1960s, so which is also very important to understand uh, the setup that was uh, written or the time that it was written in. So this was uh, 1960, uh, which was written by theorist uh, Kevin Lynch. And uh, this book uh, majorly focuses on uh, cases of three cities from uh, America, which is Boston, uh, Jersey City, and Los Angeles. Uh, so the, the book is about the cities and uh, whether this look is of, uh, so the way the cities look, the image of the city, what the name such is, is of an importance and whether it can be changed or not is what it questions. And uh, the urban landscape among its many goals uh, is uh, uh, is also something to be seen or to be remembered. And uh, uh, so giving visual form to the city is a special kind of a design problem. Uh, so this book is actually uh, set up in a period where uh, thinkers, theorists had started questioning the visual qualities uh, of uh, the cities. Uh, another way they look, how people perceive it, or uh, what can design uh, bring in to, uh, to the visual qualities of these cities. So this book uh, is trying to examine this design problem of uh, the visual quality, and that is where it has taken the uh, case of uh, these three cities. And it suggests a method uh, whereby we might begin, begin to deal with the visual form at uh, the urban scale and offer some first principles of uh, city design. Yeah. So, uh, so this book largely um, talks about, uh, so I've listed certain terms that it uh, really focuses on in terms of uh, the image of the environment. So, um, so any anybody uh, in living in a city has an image of the environment that they are living in. There is a mental image that everybody carries uh, in terms of uh, uh, what the city is like, or what the neighborhood is like, or uh, what the uh, place uh, or the street where they live in, what it is like. So there is always a mental image that everybody carries of where they live and also the places they visit very often or they uh, go to some place. So there is always a so most of the time you must have encountered that people have this image of India where they imagine elephants on the street or something like that, right? So that is, this is for somebody who has not visited the place, though. But uh, yeah, so, so a mental image is something which everybody uh, carries in their mind. And uh, he introduces this term called as uh, legibility. So legibility here, uh, where when when he mentions the uh, legibility in this context, he's talking about how legible a city is, like how easily can one read a city or one can associate with a city who is moving around. So legibility is associated with this motion uh, motion of movement. So somebody who is moving around in a city, how easily can that person recognize a uh, part of the city or uh, can they be organized in a very coherent uh, pattern is what questioning. So um, the visual quality of the city is decided by this uh, uh, clarity or legibility of, of the cityscape. And uh, a legible city would be one whose uh, districts or landmarks or uh, even pathways are easily identifiable and are easily grouped, uh, and could be easily grouped in an identifiable or an uh, overall pattern. So where, where we see that, uh, uh, when when we can see a pattern in terms of uh, say um, 
uh, in terms of pathways or in terms of if you can identify boundaries, you can identify edges is something what we are referring to as a legible city. Uh, and uh, building the image is uh, something uh, where when we, uh, where we talk about what are the environmental images that are the result of a two-way process between the observer and its environment, right? So uh, when when you have this relationship of uh, a person who is observing and what relationship that person shares with their environment uh, also results in the environmental images that you have, the mental images you have of a place. So uh, that is usually associated in terms of structure, identity, and, uh, and the meaning of it. So structure is, uh, so when you're talking about uh, uh, um, a structure. So you're talking about the the spatial uh, meaning of it, or the, um, the the spatial part pattern of it. And identity is usually associated with the image that is formed about a certain place uh, for you. So what identity does a particular place uh, hold for you, or a particular uh, building, or a particular uh, area, or a particular street? So what is that identity that it holds for you is what uh, the relationship would be for an observer, right? And also when we say meaning, so meaning is an aspect which is more of a uh, emotional or it is more of uh, uh, the feeling that you have or if you have any memories with that place, right? So when we are talking about building an image uh, of, of a place, we are actually uh, identifying in terms of what is the identity for you, then what is the structure that you can observe or what uh, you uh, see, and uh, the meaning for it. So what is your association? So there will be personal memories or uh, uh, association with that place. And uh, lastly, uh, he also introduces uh, this term called as imageability, uh, which is uh, very uh, the significantly used uh, in this book or it was introduced in this book and um, uh, so uh, so which which is uh, so imageability is uh, is nothing but uh, very much relatable to legibility where we are talking about the image whether a city is readable or not what visual qualities it carries or how does what perceives the image of a city is what uh, this book is looking at uh, so, in this book, uh, he, as we said, that he's compared the image of uh, the three cities here. So, when we're talking about uh, legibility, uh, here, um, so he argues here that, you know, uh, people orient themselves by creating uh, mental maps. Okay, so whenever the people are in urban situations or they are moving around in the city, they orient themselves by using, uh, by creating mental images or mental maps of the city. And a central uh, uh, notion is that of legibility, where, uh, where legibility means that the extent to which the cityscape can be read and people who move through the city engage in uh, wayfinding is what uh, he's trying to say. So they need to recognize and organize uh, urban elements. So in the process of wayfinding, the, the strategic link is the environmental image. Okay. So if you see this example here, uh, which is which is an uh, which is a prehistoric uh, map uh, uh, during the Iron Age, Bronze and Iron Ages. So here also, if you can see that there is always a mental image in terms of uh, people. Uh, to the urban elements or the elements where they're living in and the parts with, to which people identify very easily and which are important. So you can see there's a clear definition of, uh, uh, so there's a clear legibility as you can see when you're looking at this pattern that is different. So um, imageability is that quality in a physical object which gives it a high probability of evoking a strong image in, a, in any given observer. So if uh, if you're looking at this image where uh, you're looking at Eiffel Tower, and uh, so there are these boulevards and avenues which lead you to this particular monument, and uh, it is uh, so that point of reference uh, also that that is also the kind of mental image that you're carrying always when you're moving through the city, and it is also the monument which you continuously refer to or orient yourself uh, with, right? So you're constantly referring to. Uh, uh, the tower probably you're locating it when you're moving around uh, 
uh, just to understand or oriented which part uh, or which direction you are walking uh, walking into or you know uh, or which uh, which area you are probably walking in. so that becomes a point of reference for you so uh, so usually imageability is associated with the shape color or arrangement which facilitates the making of vividly identified powerfully structured highly useful mental images of uh, the environment so um, so you uh, uh, if you if you see that uh, you know the mental image if you are talking about in the uh, context of the city of bombay so if you are talking about the environmental image that you have so you know that uh, you orient yourself in terms of you always know uh, that the west is where the sea coast is and then there is a central railway line running through it and the western railway line running through it and uh, the east west division also happens on the basis of uh, the railway line uh, then we have the western express highway running through it so these are certain uh, environmental images that you always carry then there is the the, the sanjay gandhi national park which happens towards the northern uh, central side of uh, the city um, so that creates a very clear sort of a environmental image for anybody who is uh, living in the city and uh, so that so these are the elements that usually get highlighted so um when we say that you know we are talking about a legible city and uh, the anchors or identifiable uh, elements or parts of the city so this is something which we had seen last time of uh, venice and uh, this is a diagram which is made by Edmund bacon in his book uh, so uh, if you if you if you see really that uh, it it shows how clearly the paths uh, or uh, uh, are identified here the pathways are identified then you can see there are these public spaces which are sort of anchoring these uh, pathways and then there is a very uh, specific organization of the water channels that is running through there are bridges which are going across but but this is again an abstraction of uh, uh, what uh, the image of this place could be or how it makes the place more legible in that sense or readable in that sense because it does so these blank spaces does not mean that nothing exists there there are obviously uh, there are buildings there but one can clearly associate uh, with the pathways that are uh, running through it right so this is the san marco piazza which is uh, uh, which is one of the largest uh, which is the largest squares in venice and uh, so there are there are other multiple uh, squares also which uh, which are smaller in size or in, uh, lesser in hierarchy so you can very clearly still have these anchor points which became which, which become points of reference so there is a certain hierarchy also that you see here uh this is another example which very similarly how uh, which contributes to the legibility where you have very clearly defined uh, uh pathways or axes that are created which are again anchoring some very important structures so these uh elements help uh, one orient themselves in a certain way or to orient themselves uh, to to read a, a fact so these are the elements which makes it more uh, legible or the visual quality uh, is enhanced because of these clearly defined elements right so what what was uh, the agenda like when uh, uh, this book was uh, written so so this is uh, it is so what lynch says is that you know it is important that these urban elements are not hermetically designed into precise and final detail but present an open ended order right uh, so urban inhabitants should be hello um uh, you audible ke ha yeah, kya did, did my screen just shut off okay. Yes. So yeah. 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 It did. Okay. You can see your team screen. Yeah, I think my team's is acting a little strange. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. we can see it. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So urban inhabitants should be able to actively form their own story. So this book, uh, very very largely talks about. Uh, what is the people's perception who are living uh, in them, right? So. till now we have discussed about uh, how professional observers read cities how would be these cities as designers or architects right 
but uh, this book focuses completely on how people leave cities and what are their uh, they should be able to form their own stories and create new activities so that is the success of uh, uh, of a of a good city or a, uh, or how one how does one build the image of a city so he uh, so he presents this work more like an agenda for urban designers and uh, they should design the city in such a way that it gives room for uh, three related that is movements which is mapping learning and shaping so uh, this is the background with which uh, this uh, this concept was brought about of reading cities and legibility and the visual quality of a, of a city and with this background is something now we'll, we'll look at in detail how what his findings were and what uh, what idea does he propose uh, to be read so when uh, we're talking about a mental map so what is mental mapping actually it's nothing but a process of uh, way finding how how do people uh, 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 find their way through the city or what are the images that they carry so the, these are the basic uh, uh, elements that people try to map out in terms of uh, so it it actually starts at different scales right so if you can see this image it is talking about uh, an environmental image where you start with uh, the geography or or the nation where you're located right where there is probably your uh, city is located in uh, amongst the hills so maybe it is like a city in a bowl right in the valley so it is surrounded by hills so florence is one such example which is uh, surrounded by hills and uh, then you associate with uh, the landscape or the region where where you specifically maybe have a river in the context or maybe uh, so river is could be on the edge of the city or dividing the city then uh, you have these some major landmarks in the city like in the case of venice you saw it was the san marco piazza or uh, in the case of florence is the san marco uh, uh, the the church right or uh, the so the cathedral sorry uh, so so these are the monuments where you start associating with or the business district is one place which you identify with so that is for the overall city and then you carry another mental image for the street that you are living in or the neighborhood that you are living in or it could be the business district where you travel for work every day or or maybe your uh, college precinct right so where you are uh, so every, so whenever you were coming to uh, the institute uh, every day you were traveling so you had certain mental map or the imagery of uh, the route that you take or the things that you associate with right so uh, so the image is product of both immediate sensation and uh, of the memory of past experience right so it is heavily dependent on memory so uh, it, it it is it is a variable it, it varies from person to person how the space is perceived uh, so uh, coming to uh, how uh, lynch used this mental mapping as a method is uh, that uh, as we have already i have already mentioned that he looked at three different cities of boston uh, jersey and uh, other jersey city and los angeles so uh, there were two sets of uh, maps that were two, two kinds of maps that were created so one mental map uh, is is done by a professional observer right so as a professional observer you tend to map the city in a certain way you tend to show certain elements which are important to you according to your professional expertise so if you are drawing so which is what uh, sort of in a way we are doing right now in your studio exercise also so you are you are mapping it as as more of an of a professional observer so whatever you are observing is what you are mapping out so you map out uh, the some important uh, Element, uh, elements like the, the railway lines or you're trying to map out the major roads and what are the network of the roads and which are the, the uh, very specific neighborhoods that you can point out certain activities that you're pointing it out right so which are important to you or certain landmarks which are important uh, so that was one set of maps uh, which was created and then uh, about uh, 30 people were interviewed and their mental map or their mental imagery was uh was made so which varied from person to person so there were 30 different uh, observers uh, uh, or the mental images of uh, of uh, citizens that were created and uh, these were then combined into one consolidated map okay so i'll just show you so this is the case of uh, boston so um, so if you can uh, 
see that you know uh, there was a certain uh, if you can see on the right side or uh, the bottom one that is the visual form of boston as seen in the piece so it was a map which was created which uh, with a lot of legibility by the professional employees and uh, and the kind of map uh, that was created derived from the verbal interviews okay so uh, so there is there is a difference uh, which one would see in in terms of how a professional expertise would put, put put down a map and in the way uh, a city or uh, like you know a person who is moving through it would perceive this mental image and uh, the either the places which are identified are evoked by their personal memory right so there is there will be always a difference between that and it would be in the most practical sense always um so so what uh use was the was these maps of so i'm uh, i'm not showing you each and every city that was studied in uh, because uh, i think it is more about what were his find uh, what philosophy or what principles were derived from these studies is what we focus on uh, so in case of boston so this particular so the the the, culmin, the the maps that were created the mental maps that were created by the observer and the uh, uh, and the interview uh, the people who were interviewed uh, it culminated into uh, another set of maps which was more like a summary of uh, Uh, all these maps, which which actually pointed out the points of uh, conflict, or you know the points of so when uh, the uh, the mental images of different people were overlaid with each other. But again, keep it in mind it was only limited to thirty people, right? So this is uh, it depends on what is the area that you are mapping out. Then uh, it it should be uh, very wisely thought of in terms of how many people ideally should be interviewed. So this method has been generally derived uh, derived from people thirty people who were interviewed, and uh, when these thirty maps were overlaid with along with the professional expertise map, uh, it 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 sort of uh, revealed certain difficulties in terms of confusions or floating points, weak boundaries, isolations, uh, certain parts which didn't have any image at all and which which were found blank very consistently. Certain neighborhoods were found. Uh, certain districts were found blank space as blank blank spaces uh, throughout the thirty interviews and blank spaces in the sense uh, there was uh, people did not carry a certain image of those places so they were not probably as legible or they were not seen as something that people identified with or associated with so that was the lack of character or differentiation or there was ambiguity in that so, so these points of conflicts were identified through uh, the overlaying of these maps and then these uh, conflict maps or the, these problem maps uh, or problem images uh, become uh, like the first step for designers to really uh, consider while designing or the places of uh, intervention or points to consider while uh, while so it is just like doing any site analysis Right. So when we always talk about uh, you're doing a site analysis, and when you're doing the site analysis, you get certain starting points through that analysis or uh, through the observations that you're doing. You get certain starting points that you need to consider while designing. So this particular uh, method gives you that starting point for you to start design. Okay. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, so. Through these studies, what uh, Lynch identified uh, is that you know, uh, so as we as as mentioned earlier, this study is more about the visual quality or the physical quality of a of a space or of a city. So uh, because we are talking about just the the visual uh, images, uh, there were certain elements. Uh, he has tried to decipher through that and try to identify. Which are most commonly found, or people most commonly associated with, uh, through the, uh, through the, uh, through the mental image, right? So uh, there was uh, there are, but when you are talking about imageability, it is not only visual; it has other influences as well, which he mentions that you know there is a social meaning of an area, its function, its history, or even its name has something to do with uh, the kind of image you form. Yeah. So 
so it is not only physical all the time it is not only visual uh, quality all the time it is also the, the meaning that it holds for the observer or the user or the person who is moving but from uh, uh, the contents of the city images that uh, they had received uh, which are they try to identify or refer to certain physical forms through those images and they classified them as five types of elements which is path edges uh, district nodes and landmarks so these are the five elements which were found most common uh, in all the mental images that uh, that anybody any observer could could create right so uh, uh, and because they appeared again and again in most of the environmental images that were created they were used for this so what getting into detail like uh, what is the importance or how does one read paths and edges so paths and edges are uh, uh, not just paths and edges but if you will see that all these five elements are very interrelated to each other and they influence each other and they have a very deeper impact on each other and uh, so if you if you really see that a path without an edge or probably has no meaning like if you you could identify a path or a uh, uh, more better or you can read a path more better when it has a defined edge or as an edge which you can associate it with because the human vision doesn't travel uh, in just one direction right it is traveling at your eye level you are looking up you're looking down so it is traveling uh, in every direction so it is not only the path that you're looking at but it is also the edge that uh, you're looking at so when we're talking about paths very specifically so path is the street that the sidewalk it could be associated with trails canals uh, rivers roads channels so all of these elements uh, come under the category of pathways and uh, uh, so the pathways are what they are arranged in the space and movement between uh, between so paths are the channels along which the observer moves and uh, uh, so uh, so it is also said that you know if you have a uh, unclear path it means it's an unclear city so paths are really defining uh, your legibility in terms of, of the city so you can see these different images of different cities and uh, how they have a very uh, peculiar and a different way of organization to uh, see in terms of the path so if you see new york it is very uh uh rigid in terms of there is a gray dye pattern which is of uh, equal sizes also but still uh, a person can very easily read those so, uh, read through those uh, patterns but then suddenly if you will see there is a node and uh, there is another street which is going which is sort of uh, cutting through the gray but uh, but still one can very easily Uh, read or associated with that pathway, and that gives an identity to that particular pathway, right? Or if you see in terms of Rome, uh, you're can you're easily associating yourself with the river edge, or there is a huge plaza in the center. Then there is so it, it seems very organic if you compare it with New York, and it seems like it cannot be legible in a way, but it has very well defined pathways even in that sense because. you can associate with certain other elements which are anchoring those paths right so even in terms of toronto or uh, if you're looking at the uh, london also which again seems like it is a mixture of different kinds of uh, patterns but again uh, something which is very clearly defined in terms of uh, the the mental image that a person would carry uh, so another example uh, if we look at is uh, uh shah janabad that is uh, old uh, delhi so uh, it it at at first glance again you seem like uh, it seems like it is a very uh, chaotic kind of uh, distribution of pathways but if you can see this also has very clearly defined uh, uh, uh paths that you can identify so, so there is a river and you can see there see a very clear axis which is going to the port and then there is another axis which is created to the mosque and uh, There's a third axis, so you can very uh, even the wall uh, edge becomes another path or a boundary in that sense. Uh, so, so one can very uh, easily associate with these uh, as paths. So even though the internal organization looks very organic in that sense, but but still, still it makes the city more legible in terms of accessing 
uh, the important elements. So the things that are important to this, right? The elements that are important to this particular. Uh, even the same applies to uh, Latin Delhi, where again you have very clear. Uh, there is this particular pattern of the pathways that you can identify with, which is again making the city more legible in that sense of the hexagonal grid that was laid out by uh, um so uh, edges are basically so edges and pathways really are uh, are two elements which go very much together with uh, very much with each other in terms of uh, you cannot see them in isolation truly uh, but uh, like edges are defining boundaries and uh, the, the, these boundaries in most cases uh, you know, it's very interesting because they could be real or perceived also so if you saw the case of Shahjanabad, the wall was a very definite boundary right but most of the times uh, we also perceive certain boundaries in an area so the perception uh, so uh, so these boundaries could be uh, when we say they are real it means that they could be defined by certain physical elements Okay, uh, so the physical elements like uh, in Shahjanabad's case was uh, the wall could be the physical element or the pathway itself could be a physical element, the water body or uh, railway lines or anything, na any natural feature on the edge of the hill. So these uh, physical elements usually define the boundary. But uh, at the same time, uh, some boundaries are notional. Like, you know, uh, a very common example uh, of notional boundary would be uh, like the the function of a place also, right? If there is a, suppose an area where you know there is a particular market that happens in this area. So you automatically in your head, you clear, you, you distinctly uh, form a boundary for that area saying that, okay, this is the market area and you have this notional boundary for that area always. So that is a perceived boundary or, you know, very typically perceived boundaries are where for people uh, where, uh, certain people of certain race or certain caste are residing. So it is very easily identifiable when you say, okay, this is a Hindu neighborhood or this is a Muslim neighborhood or uh, this is where the black people live or, you know. So these are ghettos that uh, we get into and these are perceived boundaries which uh, which are which are very commonly found uh, in, uh, in our places and how humans perceive this and people identify with it also in that sense. So when you when somebody is drawing a mental map, most of the times they are so when when they are marking edges, they are associating it with certain kind of an imagery or uh, or a notion that they carry for that particular place. Uh, so when we're talking about edges and uh, paths, so from in Bombay, this is a very typical example where you're talking about uh, the marine drive. So you're associating yourself. Uh, with uh, the edge of water that you see on one side and very distinctly you can see this uh, particular architectural style that is on one side also right the article buildings which are which were created so you are having uh, this uh, mental imagery of, of structures of very clearly defined edge uh, on both sides of the pathway, which is very associative in terms of the architectural character it carries and uh, the nature, the natural boundary. So it's, it's not really a natural boundary. I mean, it's both. Uh, so you have a ma you have man-made elements also, which is highlighting that edge or the boundary, and also the nature, which is uh, sort of forming a part of it, and then the view that you get from uh, these elements. So, so this is again a way of uh, doing that. Then in case of Venice, also you have very clearly so. Uh, when is the case becomes very uh, interesting because your uh, mode of movements are uh, very different than what you would typically uh, find in any other city. So here the mode of movement would be more of pedestrian and uh, the waterways, right? So the waterways are the pathways here and the edges of the city of uh, when it becomes more legible in that sense or more readable because of the certain character that the entire place is carrying in terms of uh, the architectural style, the materials that are used, the colors or uh, the facade that you see, which is very continuous. And uh, there are these uh, bridges at, uh, appearing at certain intervals and the connection of these canals that happens. So these are the back alleys. So you're associating yourself with the back alleys at the front in a very different way. So, uh, so these elements, so you need to really understand what are these elements which uh, help you 
form or create that edge or a boundary in your mind or which is which clearly defines to define the pathways as well uh so your edge could be uh, as simple so this is law garden in ahmedabad so your edge could be as simple as an informal uh, shopping street so that is also forming a very clearly defined edge and but giving a very different mental image and a very different experience for anybody who is moving through this uh, through this place so uh, every area is associated identified with these different uh, elements that you uh, experience then uh, moving on to another element which is the nodes and uh, the districts where where you can see that again uh, uh, i would say that you know the the path and the edges are helping you form the nodes basically and uh, and the nodes and and all these three elements together form a district so if you really see on the right hand side you will see this image which is marked as a district so in this district you will always find all of these elements coexist together coexisting together in terms of clearly defined paths edges or uh, you know certain nodes that are getting formed uh, so this is uh, dublin and uh, dublin city and so these particular nodes that are getting formed uh, which are of certain importance and obviously the landmarks which will come to later so so these are the elements you are constantly identifying with uh, as a whole uh, so uh so when we are talking about uh, nodes uh, so this is a, a particular example uh, that i wanted to show you so nodes are uh, like the focus points when which uh, which are incidental or deliberate uh, when one is moving through the path so the path and edges uh, are are leading you or uh, are anchored by multiple nodes you can say so the uh so they are located usually at the strategic spot so if you see this particular case uh, uh where you can see that you know the uh, there is there is a larger square which is happening or which forms one node or there is a slightly smaller square which happens uh, to create a, a little uh, different hierarchy of a node and then there is another smaller one here and even in this case if you see uh, that you can very clearly see that uh, uh this this particular street is uh, heavily heavily anchored by two different uh, uh two two nodes at the end you know that those are like the anchors holding uh, this particular pathway if you can really see so these nodes become very important in terms of maybe the organization of the space or uh, the function that they uh, facilitate or the activity that is going on there or a particular uh, monument that is in this case you can see it is a very particular monument that you can see that is making the space which is a church right so the uh, so the importance comes from their fallen observer on the basis of its uh, association uh so when when we are talking about uh, uh districts uh, we are talking about uh, came to large areas that are two dimensional but uh, here again so when they were studying boston they got very varied boundaries of places so again coming back to the boundaries so so as i said all these elements are interlinked with each other and there will you will find a lot of overlaps in terms of understanding of edges uh, paths and uh, nodes districts so if you can see the districts are also sort of a way of demarcating boundaries so here again you will see that you know uh, uh certain districts have very clear edges but certain districts had very overlapping edges or uh, edges for different people uh, for different people uh, for the observers or uh, uh, in terms of uh, how they perceive the boundaries okay so there are no clearly defined uh, physical boundaries in this sense uh, but in this case but you have uh, these very uh, uh Uh, incidental or or a notional sense of boundaries that exists right so so if you ask somebody that uh, what is the extent of your neighborhood okay and uh, so everybody has this mental image and they will actually form uh, they'll actually draw out uh, and say okay my neighborhood is up to this road and uh, and the row of houses behind me for for me right but if you ask the same question for somebody who is living in the building opposite to this person he might draw out these boundaries in a very different sense so we need to understand where these boundaries start getting blurred or if the relation gets lost which further helps us 
to understand the conflict of the time. So uh, this is one example of uh, this is the Temple Town of Sri Rangam, and uh, where you can see a very clear identification of uh, boundaries, path edges. So you can see all of them together. So uh, the district. So this is uh, the central core is the temple, and then you have these multiple uh, tiers which are going around the temple. So 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 the temple becomes the focal point. But then you have uh, these walls which are formed, which are very clearly identifying or marking the boundaries, uh, which are clearly identifying the edges. And these uh, gopurams that you can see, the multiple hierarchy of gateways, which uh, uh, every person can associate with or identify with, uh, they become the, uh, 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 the elements which mark the differentiation between the boundaries. And uh, the, the people who are living there are also very distinctly uh, uh, divided wow. as for the caste, right? So this was a temple town, and uh, caste was a very major uh, element or a major factor which was used to divide people uh, in terms of the arrangement of the city. So obviously, the uh, the people who were living close to the temple were the priestly caste, uh, priestly caste, and then the, the royal family, and so on. So as as your caste is getting lower and lower, you're towards the outer edge of the of the city. And probably the untouchables are even outside the walls. So these walls are uh, created uh, for caste also and to have a very clear hierarchy. So hierarchy becomes a very important. So your mental image is uh, becomes that for this particular city. Uh, even in this case, if you see this, uh, this is Jerusalem and uh, Jerusalem Old City, which is again having a very distinct quarters in terms of. So here the the quarters. Uh, yes, there is a wall. Uh, which is uh, like a physical element which is divide, which is demarcating or identifying it as one uh, old core of the city. But uh, in the old core of the city also, you'll further find that there are clearly, very clearly defined pathways in terms of this axis that is getting formed like a cross. Then uh, you have these, uh, then within those, uh, so which is dividing it into four quadrants or four districts, uh, very, uh, uh, very obviously, which you can see and observe, but then within those districts also there are certain uh, dividing pathways which are forming the main roads uh, of uh, for that quarter. And these quarters are again divided on the basis of the religion. So there's a Muslim quarter, the Armenian quarter, and the Christian Jewish. So that is a very clear distinction that you would find in terms of uh, how people see it, right? So, and within that, there will be some important monuments uh, which are shaping. Also, there is the Tower of David, and uh, so so these become the anchors of the streets which are within these neighborhoods further. Uh, then again, uh, coming back uh, to uh, to Delhi again. So, if, if you are looking at the uh, Delhi, when we said that it seemed very chaotic, the other parts of the city, uh, but even though they are very organic and uh, uh, chaotic in a, in the sense of uh, in a, like, as a as a perception, but they can they still have a very clearly defined boundaries which are based on uh, most of the times which are which is based on the function that is, it has. So there's the market areas are very distinctly identified in terms of what is the kind of market that exists there. Okay, so you will find it in most of the old cities, not just in Delhi that uh, there is a very clear distinction between all the neighborhoods very, uh, very uh, based on the occupation or based on the market that exists there or or uh, like last uh, in uh, when shirish had presented he presented about amdabad right this, this different chaklas which happened at every gate so these distinct markets were so they help you identify a district as well in terms of the economy that they have so that also becomes one way of identifying. Or uh, this is uh, Varanasi. So Varanasi also has these boundaries uh, which were identified in uh, in terms of uh, the the temple boundary. So what is the perceived boundary for one temple area, and uh, what is the influence area of that temple, or which are the people who are using? So there are multiple ways of associating with districts and boundaries. People carry different notions in that sense. Uh, again. Uh, you are very uh, clearly identifying uh, 
So this is a more of having an environmental image of Delhi. Like if you can very clearly see that the Yamuna, the old city is there where we already talked about the walls. Then you have the railway uh -huh. line which runs outside and then the Latin Delhi which comes in together. So, uh, so there are multiple layers or there are very different, uh, the variations are very, very obvious because the uh, evolution has happened over a period of time. So, but in spite, despite of these variations, the legibility is very clear, right? The legibility is very uh, unique in that sense and can be very easily identified in uh, the way uh, a person would move through these areas. Or even in the case of uh, Paris, for that matter, you can see the river. Uh, so, uh, so the river becomes an element which is identifying the strict here, which is separating uh, two, uh, uh, the city in two parts. And then again, you have these multiple pathways which are further uh, defining the district within the city. So uh, the overall distinction happens. Uh, you can see there is uh, this ring road, which is, uh, you can see the radial pattern which is happening and then the river running through it and the multiple anchors, which are very obviously seen, which are holding uh, the different districts together. Now coming to landmarks, uh, I'm repeating this image because I thought it uh, it, it may have uh, made so much sense to have it here as well. Uh, <clears throat> so landmarks are the focal points or people associate with, uh, like very most popularly associate with certain place uh, is also known as is, is, is a landmark. So it could be any uh, particular building, it could be a monument, it could be a store, or it could be a signage also for that matter, or it could be, uh, natural elements like a mountain or uh, in, most, in most of the context it could be a very big tree also as simple as that. So what are these focal points or what are these landmarks with which people associate? Uh, again, I'm repeating this image, I'm sorry, but then uh, I thought it was very important that it came at this uh, juncture. So uh, again, here we are associating with when we said that, you know, there are certain focal points that get formed because of these landmarks. So these uh, these squares or churches. So these uh, graves are the monuments. So all these monuments also become the landmarks and the icon points. So if you can see this image very carefully, uh, it is actually talking about all the five elements which uh, Lynch has mentioned in terms of uh, path edges. Uh, so edges, which I show you in some of the images. Uh, then uh, uh, it is about the nodes that are getting formed through these different squares. Uh, then it is also about the landmarks uh, which are getting formed. So this is the San Marco Piazza. This is the image of that. So the, the tower, the bell tower itself becomes a very uh, I, becomes very iconic and uh, landmark of association. And the cathedral itself and the and the edge that this uh, node or this particular square is forming. So all of these elements uh -huh. come together. Uh, this is the city of Florence, which I briefly mentioned before. So very typically, you would see the environmental image that uh, or the urban landscape that Florence offers. Is you have these hills which are surrounding, and then the city is in a bowl kind of a thing. Uh, then you have uh, the cathedral marking uh, the landmark. You have multiple landmarks which you can see in the city. So this is the view from the hill anyway. Uh, then the river. So uh, I forgot it. Aaron or something. Okay, I'm not. Uh, so this is the river edge that you have for the city, and even the island, the, uh, the houses create a very legible character in terms of the roof, the color, the facade that they have, the character that they carry. Uh, this is uh, again. So I'm just showing overall examples now. Nothing very specific to landmarks. Uh, this is uh, a drawing uh, of uh, one of the poles in Ahmedabad, which is again trying to uh, create uh, an imagery, but this is an imagery of a professional uh, mental imagery. This is not an observer's mental imagery, but this does uh, mark out uh, things like what are the edges, what nodes come into picture. So the, the trees become an important element when you're marking out the nodes, the, the, the movement of animals or the, the places where most of the time you'll find activities and uh, uh, there are a certain uh, fodder uh, points, so cattle uh, cattle tracking is done. So there are multiple elements that have been brought together in this particular uh, drawing, which which help create 
uh, a mental image and it is not only the path and uh, notes and uh, the landmarks but it is also the human activities and the association that brings out uh, association this is another example of a fold itself uh, which is uh, again on similar lines where you can see a very clearly defined district boundary so one fold is has a very clearly defined uh, boundary in terms of uh, again it's a notional boundary i would say and the movement so these paths become the important paths and the movement to these uh, becomes important what edges does it offer so it offers edges which are more softer in the sense of the human activities then the smaller indents which happen where does the parking happen where does the uh, seating happen so all of these elements are brought in together uh you know i thought i would also briefly introduce uh, this method which is called uh, uh, so there was another uh, theorist called gordon uh, cullen which who also introduced a visual method of mapping uh, which is completely driven by the physical elements and uh, the visual quality of the space so he introduced uh, this method where one uh, is moving through one particular path and what does an observer so this this mapping is completely done by a professional observer and this is not uh, but could be done by uh, any other observer also and i think it would be interesting to know uh, that as well uh, so at different points uh, what is the view that is revealed to a person and what sort of an imagery does that create and what uh, interest does it create for a person who is moving around so this is again a tool of analysis into creating an imagery at every step that you are walking within a city so this particular plaza that you can see is represented in series of visions that you can see at different points so when you enter what you see when you walk through this what you see when you enter the plaza what you see before you enter the plaza what you see so how where there is an element of surprise or what is the element of appearance is something that is talking about so you can find more about this method also so uh just to sum up uh, like uh i'm sorry i think i have to go short for time okay so just to sum up in a way uh i thought that you know so we can say that lynch is firstly looking so focusing on method that okay i don't know what happened uh i have i've not stopped presenting right so Okay. So, uh, first, people should be able to acquire a clear mental map of their urban environment. That is necessary when you are talking about this method. And people should be able to learn how to navigate in this environment by training. And first, must be able to operate and act upon their own environment. So, uh, so it's it's a valuable work to understand how people perceive, inhabit, and move around in the urban landscape. it shows that urban space is not just composed of its physical characteristics but equally by representations and mental images right and uh, just briefly i think it is also uh, i would also say that it is a, it can also be seen as a precursor to the influential uh, thesis by henry lecoq who uh, was a sociologist uh, who talked about uh, how a uh, space is not just a mathematical entity but it is also socially produced so it is so, so the social elements or the activities or the people who are living there contribute to the space and uh, so lynch could be seen as a starting point for, for this thesis and uh, but uh, but there are so as i already said that you know this method was introduced in 1960s and Lynch had already envisioned that you know there could be a tech technology where people would use or uh, the technology to move around and uh, to use it as a method of uh, wayfinding. And uh, but but what happens? So today we are actually using GPS and uh, our mobile phones to navigate through uh, through places. But he that time he had sort of predicted that and that is happening. But he had also mentioned that what if that device fails? and it it stops uh, so then that will be the moment when people will be disoriented and they would not be able to associate where they are moving around so i think that's a very interesting argument that uh, probably we could actually talk about also and how does that affect uh, the visual quality of a city and how how people are uh, navigating through phones uh, and then what is their association with the place and how do they perceive 
Um hello am i audible yeah um yes. okay so i lost connection in between i'm not sure if you already uh, brought this up uh, but the whole presentation was about and then the talk about notional boundaries and all was sort of reminding me of this book uh, called city and the city uh, by uh, china mewil so it's basically a story of these two cities that occupy the same geographical space but uh, they're sort of it's it's they sort of intertwine within each other and uh, they're sort of treated as two separate cities and and so i kind of assume that the plot twist at the end was going to be some supernatural thing that was controlling but it it turned out that the people themselves were actually able to sort of understand these boundaries these they're not even physical boundaries they're just two spaces that are so close to each other but they're treated as two separate entities entirely and and i mean i i think that like this idea of perceiving these these spaces as somehow separate even though they're geographically and physically part of the same street uh, i i don't know i, I thought that was uh, um something that that was sort of related to um yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes it is it is very interesting to because i think this method allows you to understand uh, the perceptional qualities also rather than just what it, what is right like i mean what exists uh, so uh, i mean as a as a uh, as a professional or uh, somebody who is mapping uh, this it, it is very easy for us to have very practical sense of having these boundaries we are very easily identifying boundaries we have these markers we, uh, we, we create these physical markers to set boundaries but then but in reality if you see that you know everybody has a very perceptional sense of this one which is very right what what you are trying to say and that varies from person to person so i think this method is very important in understanding these perceptional uh, markers also Uh, Anyone else? Uh, yeah. Yes, Shri. I had I had a, a, a I had an observation and a, 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 I, I you know it is important to acknowledge that uh, in what period Kevin Lynch is actually uh, uh, talk, talking about this, this entire idea of the image of the city. Okay, it is in the backdrop of the 1960s uh, kind of uh, uh, in many ways. Uh, resistance to the uh, uh, sort of modern kind of idea of the city you know uh, that the city is a space which is uh, separated by function okay uh, and and zoning largely okay which was which was very very uh, uh, very very sort of prevalent in those in those days in the uh, kind of planning and and architecture academic cultures as well yeah whereas there were there were people like kevin lynch and and many others who were arguing that you no know, the city is uh, is also so built by people and every day you know and uh, uh, and and this and 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 how does that uh, how does that actually consolidate into the vision of a city i think uh, i think kevin lynch was was an attempt to do that you know to go down on the field and ask people to actually draw what their idea of the city is you know and and allowing them to get these and and, and collect them and then consolidate them into the kind of core ideas of whether it is landmark and uh, 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 boundary and territory and things like that so i i find that uh, uh, as a fascinating mode of uh, resistance in the 60s in that sense okay and and which is what is interesting today is that uh, uh, many uh, 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 many schools now consider the, uh, uh, kevin lynch's method of working as fundamental to your ground ground kind of research you know yeah any any other or uh, yes, anyone else
<coughs> Anyone? He wants to add or the reflection, maybe not a question. What anybody wants to say? Question is very bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> question is gone completely. <laughs> Is it raining there? It's raining heavily. Yeah, so it's raining heavily here also. <laughs> My connection is very bad, but I, I know I just wanted to say that uh, like uh, I just wanted to say like what how Kevin Lynch has been lot um, uh, like misunderstood and misused in because I have seen I, I come from schools which actually uh, consider Kevin Lynch as the complete master. Okay, like did my training from schools of planning and architecture and all these places. And the and, and the problem, like what like people do is that they use Kevin Lynch's outcome as hmm. a basis to allow not the method, but as an outcome to understand cities. And that's what I find very problematic, like uh, not the method, but, but the outcome. So everyone starts looking for districts, paths. According to their perception, not the perception of people. Like you have to remember, you're an expert. You can be trained to have a perception. Okay. Your parents don't have that perception about the city. Nobody else has that perception of the city. So moment you jump, like take Kevin Lynch, don't start finding paths, nodes, and landmarks everywhere. I don't think that's what Kevin Lynch is trying to even say. What was important to Kevin Lynch's whole process is the method where he actually uh, is able to record the perception of people and today you realize that perception of people people are not in any way uh, no, like uh, entities which are universal they have universal liking Kuch nahi hai. you go to southern part of India the southern part of India likes something different from the northern part of India just diametrically opposite okay so so the, so so there are so there, there are perceptions created which are cultural which are which are which are which are which are embedded in groups of people through time because of many other reasons social reasons it might be reasons of so and so and that sense of uh, like uh, even a person like Lefebvre who's who's, uh, who's re been referred to by KT is a very important person because these are practices these are practices which set up perceptions and it's not that the perception can be universalized. Okay, I know that a lot of us try to universalize perception. Ki maine agar ye baat dekha hai, to ye sabko baat dekhna hi chahiye. Okay, architects actually tend to have that this thing. So, so I think that's a danger which I think we should avoid. And uh, when you are using Kevin Lynch, it should come from the people's perspective. It should come from the and you should be first. First of all, you should be able to map. And the problem with the Indian cities, it is so diverse socially. Kevin Lynch didn't have to handle the diversity. Kevin Lynch, when 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 he was mapping, he did not have to handle social diversity, not economic diversity. But in your very cities, which you are really dealing with your own neighborhoods, okay, you are dealing with conditions which are so diverse, like it's unimaginable the diversity in Indian cities. Especially you will find in formality. In, inter, intertwined with very clearly with 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 the formal in our cities and uh, and it will be the just the just the opposites and in that question what does the person in the informal sector think and have a perception about as a city as compared to what a person would in a high rise living in probably uh, the nth number of floor have as a perception of the city would be just something to explore i think something interesting to explore also so, so that is something I so, believe. Uh, Paul, yeah. Interestingly, interestingly, in 2003, uh, we we uh, performed this uh, uh, this kind of methodology kind of experiment in three small towns in Gujarat, uh, which are uh, uh, which are south of Baroda. And uh, uh, what we did, and we were we were we were doing it for a, for a thesis, uh, one of my friends' thesis. Uh, we we uh, we asked. Uh, 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 rickshaw drivers, we asked school children, we asked uh, uh, several other uh, sort of people to actually draw out their city. You know, we gave them a, a, a piece of drawing and we said, okay, uh, uh, 
we just make a map of your city. OK, uh, it's interesting that that many of the things that uh, uh, that came out were. Uh, uh, in some way, you can say that uh, it is the district or it is the boundary or things like that. You know, like, for example, the presence of a railway line in the Indian town is a uh, is a is a very important kind of a moment. Or, for example, the presence of a of a dump yard. OK, in one of the towns, everybody showed that there is a dumping. Uh, the, the, the garbage is dumped on that like it was a uh, it was a very big phenomenon. So a lot of ecological kind of uh, uh, features, a, a, a lot of. Of economic features actually featured on the uh, uh, on their maps. Uh, uh, so so it was not necessarily in that sense uh, uh, through the idea of the tar or through the idea of a landmark, but it was actually through their kind of everyday uh, experiences of how they negotiate the city. Uh, they drew uh, they drew. Uh, uh, or railway uh, fataks, you know, a lot of them actually first put the railway line and the gates that they have to cross on a rail. So their everyday really played out like that. So if we allow that method to play, the results are quite phenomenal, you know. But but you have you're right that that yeah yeah you're right you have to allow that method method to play. The phenomenal especially results. Especially what you are saying. Go ahead. Okay, what you are saying, and uh, uh, like uh, what I think, like the categories, even all these. Districts, paths, okay, and landmark will be under challenge, okay. And mm -hmm. there, there might be new categories coming. Like I know that the, you know, like the perception of people in India, whatever interacting with people, there's this notion of voids. This notion of voids, mm -hmm. like people just blank out areas, just blank out areas because mm -hmm. somehow they don't relate to it. And the notion of the void will be very important to the Indian perception of the Indian city. Okay, as much as like today, if I, I travel in my car, Dharavi is a void for me. Dharavi is a void for me. Absolute mm, void. Complete. Okay, as much as the other way around. Okay, so it's mm. not even a district. It's not even a district to be experienced or any such thing. May I? I know because I, I, I like you. You interact with students also. You will realize that a lot of us don't see this as a as a as a. So so the void will be a very important aspect when it comes to the Indian city. Or the perception of people in the Indian city. Just to give you an example, how it can be challenged. So, but I, what I, what I find interesting is Kevin Lynch's method, where he actually does not like uh, himself uh, start uh, giving yarn, but he actually starts working with people to be able to set up this uh, perception. I would like, even I would like to uh, share. Some other experience. So very recently, we've been uh, uh, so working a lot in Polivada, right? Varsova uh, Polivada. So we did something very similar exercise with the police and their perception of uh, the space and uh, the ecosystem was very different, which none of us has really seen in that perspective. So they were actually mapping out uh, when 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 we asked them to map, they were mapping out boat routes. And uh, the boat routes hmm. were more important in identifying the creek and uh, uh, the other water channels with with the uh, with the names that they associate them with, and not the names which BMC has probably given them. And the the places where mangroves exist, and uh, then they start associating with certain places where they identified as uh, certain kinds of fish that they used to catch there. So the association varies from. Communities to communities also in that sense. So if we cannot really blankly just say this path for edges or uh, nodes or landmark, you can't really identify it in that sense because their perception of movement is completely different than uh, any one of us would see city of Bombay, which I think Paul was also saying for somebody living in a high rise versus uh, somebody living in that. Yeah, so that was something very interesting. Yeah. I, I would actually like to hear from the students if they have had uh, 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 had similar experiences from the ground, you know, in uh, in uh, 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 when they have been they have been walking around. Have have you guys had a had some kind of interactions where people have uh, 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 sort of told you things that that have challenged your kind of notions and uh, perceptions about the city or about the neighborhood? <clears throat>
it does not have to be only in the context of this studio it can have it could have happened at any point of time when you are on study trips when you are on you know <clears throat> it is uh, just, something which i want you uh, add something uh, am i audible yeah 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 yes, i want to i mean I, it's not a question i mean it just a, like i have just read somewhere that every city has a speed also to itself where time passes slowly and very quickly and that is something i experience very uh, like when i come back home also like right now i'm in hyderabad so time here actually passes very very slowly compared to how it does in mumbai and uh, like even though it's the, obviously it's the same for all but um, like just somehow maybe maybe it's to do with the pace of the movement of people or the vehicular movement or maybe something of that sort but if you could tell us something maybe about more how does what affects those things like the speed of the city basically yeah so actually i thought that that was uh, that was what people like edmund bacon was hinting at and he was looking at this whole notion of movement and the idea of how people move in the city because that's closely related to time okay because if you have a city if you have a city which is structured around a certain condition like what we known and know as like people working and living in a certain way okay now working can be in many ways working can be industrial working can be home based working can be uh, like uh, service oriented work okay what it does is it generates certain types of movement it generates certain types of movement it might be vehicular movement it might be pedestrian movement okay uh, it might be movement cities are allow, uh, allowed because of their own geographies water movement very important water movement nobody nobody like takes into consideration but i thought that when edmund bacon is showing the map of venice he's showing the water lines which are actually lines of movement okay so 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 and all these systems of movement connected with people's practice set up the notion of time okay and the notion of time what you are what you are experiencing is the result of if you start analyzing of this multiple factors okay which you will see allahabad's organization of work living are very different from mumbai's organization of work and living okay they cannot be compared absolutely not okay and uh, and thus what it, what it has led to is a completely uh, different enabling uh, what is called a, a movement infrastructure okay is a completely different mm -hmm. enabling movement yeah. infrastructure allahabad might be moving in cycle cycle rickshaws Uh, uh all this must be the way alabad must be moving because much more localized but mumbai you have to cover distances train is important absolutely you can't do much without a train so your whole notion of time goes completely changed because obviously collectively people are uh, be under uh, 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 near you are uh, having a different perception of time you can't have a different perception of time otherwise you'll be left out so 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 time is not but, but in some sense quantitative yeah yeah, yeah. all but this is, this also has the, uh, uh, this this uh, movement and how you move and time has a direct relationship with how you uh, uh, perceive space not just when you're moving but when you pause you know yeah, like yeah. like how how are you actually how are you actually uh, uh, exiting from the mode uh, of transportation into the space of uh, 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 sort of static space you know and 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 uh, it makes a big difference for example i remember in both lucknow and ilhabad uh, 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 the cycle rickshaws are there but they also have those electric uh, uh, share uh, 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 vehicles remember uh, uh, and and there is a there is a, 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 some strange kind of mode in which you just jump into one uh, at any point of time in in the street you know you don't have to collect at a particular a place you don't need that you know whereas uh, for example if you are in in any any metro where you are using a metro or a train or a or a rapid transit system it creates a space from where you uh, access and you exit that mode of transportation and that becomes a, a that becomes a very important place from which you encounter 
after the city you know and many uh, 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 many writers have written about it that that the for example in context of new york that actually it is through penn station that one I, one discovered the scale of new york okay because you came in through an underground okay so you had no conception of what the city appeared like from a distance you know you went underground on the other side of the hudson okay and you exited right in the middle of the high rises of new york okay and 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 uh, and that kind of uh, uh, transition of uh, of uh, or the dynamicness of that is phenomenal and it, it affects people it it impacts them and yeah. it changes uh, the what has a the notion of space and it, time it, it changes completely because you, you because that mode of movement has demanded a consolidation of this kind of a space okay uh, you would not have that mode of movement unless you had a had a certain volume and things like that okay so uh, uh, as well as other other places which don't have these kind of large uh, uh, modes of transportation actually have a very different sense of time and space you know which and is I, and, uh, and far I, I more uh, uh, far more sort of yeah somebody was saying something no you Hello. You were saying something. I, okay. I stopped. Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we had done a similar exercise like Kevin Lynch, I think, during Maheshwar, our trip, first year study trip to Maheshwar. So in where, mm -hmm. uh, like the house which uh, my partner and I had documented was of a farmer and a cattle, uh, like a livestock breeder, like milk and all this. So mm -hmm. what we did was first the house, then how he goes to the farm. So we get the farm in the map. Then how from the farm he sells his grains in the go down. So the go down comes into the map. So and from the go down to the retail shop. So the retail shops come into the map. So we were like plotting all these narratives in the maps. I think mostly all of all of them were do, uh, doing the, these kinds of, uh, you know, mapping during the uh, Maheshwar trip. And Kayur, yeah. Kayur, the, the, the fundamental difference between that and what Kevin Lynch's method is that in that case because you were mapping. Like, yeah, I was mapping. You were, you were mapping. Yeah. Okay, so you as a as somebody who's trained to map is mapping. Okay. In oh, case yeah. of uh, in case of Kevin Lynch's method, he yeah. he he asks the people to actually draw out their uh, 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 their their city. You know, so imagine that you had to, to that milk person or whoever your farmer was. You gave him and you told him, okay, uh, what is your town? Okay, and and you ask him to draw, him or her to draw, okay, and see what things appear on that map. Yeah. So so it's 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 it's, it's uh, it, it, that that is why it is the perception mapping. It is a perception of that person that is getting mapped and not the actual life necessarily. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the fundamental kind of. Uh, uh, but it is interesting that you that you brought up this because it, uh, when you are doing that, when you are doing that mapping ex exercise, uh, you can also do a, a, a another exercise of perception mapping. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, very interesting. In the, it, I think it happens in Mumbai also. Like uh, I think recently a transport study, not really, some some time before, I think a transport study for Mumbai actually showed. Okay, like let me just give you certain figures that 83% of uh, like uh, travel in the city, okay, or 83% of the population traveling, okay, which is by some mode, uh, people use the train. But you know, when this study was done, as in terms of work, in terms of work, okay, how do people travel to work? It was found that actually 60% of the people traveled to work walking. Okay, when they had considered even going to uh, your, your going to a place of work can be going to a flat and do some domestic help. Okay, so the question which came here is that when 60% of the people is uh, go to uh, work by walking, okay, uh, are our cities even designed for it? And that has come out, let's understand, it has come out because of a perceptual ana analysis of understanding how uh, the user actually goes to. Otherwise, we would have all thought that Mumbai is all about train, train, train. That's what the immediate thing looks at. That yes, it's a train, it's not just a train. It's not a train. Data is completely something different. So mind you, like I'm saying, what I'm telling you in other words is that 
that's the importance of Kevin Lynch's method about perception. Like, please don't prejudge your city. Please don't. We as architects tend to prejudge everything. We are opinionated about everything. Okay. We have opinions because that's our training. It's so heroic and so tragic that if people don't follow us, we start crying. Okay. Kabuzir Jaisa. Kabuzir used to start crying when people don't used to follow. People would never follow him, actually. So, so that's our training. That's our problem. But I think that what you need to do is to understand that people have their own social practices. And you need to see space and time from there. About this time aspect, I also wanted to add that maybe apart from root of movement, maybe what could affect this is that here everything is like 10 minutes away for me. So even if, if, wherever I have to go, it's just like within an within a span of one hour, I'm there, the work is also done and I'm back. But like in Mumbai, probably I'll have to travel one to one and a half hour and then spend some time there. Maybe I'm stuck because of something and then, yeah, like probably that also really affects. And maybe like the city sleeps also very early, like wherever you are, wherever, like everything is just over. By 10, 30, 11, everyone's in their houses and it's just shut. So maybe that also affects, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it plays a big role. The 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 big metro allows for a large degree of anonymity, which a small place like Ilabad will not probably. You know, like I I I walk out and I'm bound to uh, encounter people that I know, or, yeah, uh, and that I don't want to encounter. Okay, uh, <laughs> and 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 that 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 is the that that is also the uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, in many ways frustration of the youth in in smaller towns you know and and if anybody has grown up in smaller town you know what that frustration is right uh, uh, i don't have spaces of an anonymity okay whereas the whereas bombay or, or a large metro is is allowing you to to sort of like you know you, you nobody will know you right it is giving that uh, uh, that that freedom and uh, it comes at a price of course yeah and 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 this is where i find that that uh, uh, the the chart that uh, Patrick Geddes creates of the cycle of life, very interesting, you know, that at particular time of your age, you actually want a certain kind of a place. And at another time, you actually want another kind of a place. And this conversation came up recently when we were looking at, I think, Khargar group the other day, you know, and, uh, uh, and, and that for many people who come from New Bombay, if you ask them uh, in their early days, they enjoyed New Bombay very much. You know, it has, it had, uh, great places to go around. There was no, there were no restrictions. You had green landscapes everywhere. And now, today, the youth feel that it is culturally very less uh, uh, sort of vibrant, you know. And, and and they seek for that vibrancy in in, uh, in a place like Bombay or in a, another place like I don't know which other cultures that you would dream of. But uh, so so this is also a very interesting uh, thing. Although I mean, Ilabad has its own culture uh, and vibrancy. <clears throat> But yeah. 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 Yes. I mean, I just wanted to add that there's also the component of uh, space. Sometimes you're walking through a street and you're like, you walk, you know, one kilometer and the time f flies by. And sometimes you're walking mm -hmm. half of that distance and you're like, when are you going to reach? You know, so this perception of, uh, of, of time sort of also gets affected by what's happening around you, the activities. And what you're seeing, and you know how your how your mind tends to trick yourself. So, for example, walking mm. through Kolaba Market might you know, walk the entire distance, and you might feel like, okay, you know, just finish it so fast. But you know, you walk a, a long, boring block with no shops, nothing. You're just walking with roads, with the traffic on one side and a boundary wall on the other side. And like, when am I going to reach my destination? So, so there is this the the element of the space around. And how your your mind sort of gets tricked into thinking or into imagining certain things. You can see your, you can see your destination at the end sometimes, like it's a tower or something like the image of the Eiffel Tower, and you're walking towards that. So then, even though it's very far away, you still feel that no, it's not. I can you know I reach there just now. So so that the, the idea of the landmarks and the spaces around also sort of have a uh, kind of an impact on how you perceive time and space. Yeah. And Very probably nice. there, are, there are nothing like if we've grown up in a small town all our lives, then probably there's nothing very new to discover on a daily basis. But 
if you live in a big city then you will always find something very engaging on every like you you will not know things and every day you get to know about some new place which is opened up or some new thing which is there <clears throat> or like someone telling you about some like that was pretty engaging i think in a big town but tell me devishi have you gone to the inner city in ilhabad have you gone through seen the inner city and and uh, and walked around there yeah i not walked around as such but yeah i've been Hmm. But um, not. I'm not referring to only Kus. I'm not referring to only Kusro Bagh. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I know the Katra region and all that. I'm, I'm referring to, yeah, the, the Ghanta Ghar and, and and all those little little gullies which are, you know, where you get some great food and things like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So actually, uh, to to me, Ilhabad is actually four 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 or five different cities. You know, in that sense. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So so so. i mean we are calling uh, ilaba smaller in comparison to bombay okay but for someone who is coming from the hinterlands around uh, uh, up ilaba is a major place you know like if if that person makes it in ilaba okay it's like uh, uh, it's like okay great i mean uh, down in a place which has institutions which has schools which provides a degree of uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, education okay which otherwise is not available in 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 the villages or you have to go for far distances okay so ilhabad is is not a, not a small place yeah. ha, it's not like it like the checklist wise it has like everything like this also that ha. also <laughs> <laughs> but the way interestingly i think you know uh, just to uh, the different conversation i'm starting like you will find that you know traditionally indian cities we have had way finding uh, as a tool which everybody has used right like it is very common in india where you will find that you will always ask somebody ki yahan kaise jana and they will have a very interesting mental image of like telling you how to reach there mm-hmm. yahan se left jana wahan pe ek ped lagega wahan pe ek paan wala hai wahan se left jana fir wahan pe kuch bachche khel rahe honge wahan se right lena so that so those images are also very interesting and we have this uh, in our cities very traditionally if you will find if you see some a uh, foreigner trying to navigate in our cities you would very uh, rarely find somebody asking for an address how do i reach there they would never ask they will try to uh, navigate their own way very rarely it happens right if unless they are like badly lost only then they'll ask i think so otherwise they'll always have uh, want to navigate by themselves but in indian context i think it is very uh, common to find, to ask people how to reach places and there is a way there's a very peculiar way of uh, narrating this way finding right like you all it will always involve smaller things like it could be you'll see is it could be some pan wala some uh, guy sitting somewhere also probably you'll always find that person sitting there at any point of time so these are also something very interesting facts uh, that would be very interesting to know when you'll do mental mapping for it right? yeah this this people sitting on particular spots is something which i've noticed a lot like this yeah. tagging you go find someone sitting there after 10 days also you will find yeah mm-hmm. else any other interesting observations about their towns and cities <clears throat> i have one if the students are not sandeep kind of ah. yeah <laughs> So um I grew up in Trivandrum right so the tallest building that I have I had ever seen in reality was a five floor or a six floor high bank tower you know which is near my house I could see that building every day and I knew it is like when I have to walk till that place 5 minutes lagta hai ya yeah, it's like 800 meters or something like that or 800 or 600 whatever like less than a kilometer The first time I went to Delhi, like I got admission in SPA Delhi, and I said, "Okay, Sham ko I'll go to Connaught Place." And and I had always seen this building um, by Charles Kuria, the the Jeevan Bharti, which is a very tall uh, building in in the in in a in a grain which is otherwise very um, of low rise building. I saw that building from a distance, and I said, "Arey, that's like you know, like I I knew my five floor high building, you know, like it's a five minute distance." And I started walking, keeping that building in mind, and. Connaught Circus is like if you know Delhi, you know it's not a straight road. It's actually a circus. It's actually a circle. So, and if you have to cross roads, you have to get down on pedestrian subways and come up again. Walk, get down, and come up. 
I never realized the power. Uh, first of all, that that eighteen story or twenty story high Jeevan Bharati was not that five floor high building. So I obviously miscalculated the time, and I started getting visibly uncomfortable. You know, like ah, why not? Ah, why not? You know, that was one. The second was this fact that if a road is not straight, but if it's a curved road, and if you see that same landmark in different, you know, angles, you know, it it just kind of it's a very different experience. That one walk kind of changed my perception, you know, of how cities yeah. are actually seen and you know kind of experienced. Coming from a small town to a big town, and you know, like the idea of geometry of streets, uh, and also this idea of calculating time with respect to a landmark, you know, and and I was seventeen at that time. Now I have a better sense of space, but and scale. But yeah, I thought yeah. it was interesting because when Arijit said that, you know, that was the first thing that struck me. Like I can also add here, like about how they she said that in um uh, so okay context my city is I live in Varanasi, so here like you said that in bigger cities that your yeah, areas you have not explored or there's so much to see, but I feel in smaller cities also like here there's so much this this really so much that I don't know of like every time I talk to new people I come across I learn about different things that are happening in some lane in some smaller locality near the old fabric. So like I never knew that there was a Nepali temple here in the city, and there's a small uh, community of uh, people living there. And similarly, there are other various uh, people who have come and settled over in, and live in small localities. So like these, they're very new. There are new stories which I come across whenever I talk to people or you know know about their experiences of the city. Like our experience of the city is very limited. Like I know I have to go to my school. Like my parents have to go to their work. So our daily, uh, our day-to-day -day lives are very limited in that part of the city or those routes. But there's so much more to those uh, experiences. Like yeah, everyone yeah. has their own limited idea of a city. Yeah, and I think that's where yeah, uh, the the Paul. That's where Paul, when he mentioned the notion of the yeah. void, you know, that's where it comes to play. Yeah. Yeah, like for me, we, even we, in, we often yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Sir. No, no, no. No, no. Go so, ahead. so I'm like for me, like for yeah. me, you know, in 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 Delhi, like for me, I I used to live in one edge of Delhi, and I you know, like I used to kind of travel to college and then come back. And for me, that that edge of the place where I used to live, there used to be a huge slum called Khoda Gao, and for me, that was the end of the world. I never realized there was Ghaziabad behind it, and you know, and and all of it. That that was never in my mental map, but. Quite interestingly, when my son draws these A4 sheets, like you know, he sometimes draws these maps. He tends to fill up all the voids with blocks, and I keep asking him why, and he's like, "Google Earth. I have seen it in Google Earth. Nothing is a void, you know. Like so, I think the <laughs> element of conditioning, you know, kind kind of works. Changing, but, but yeah, but that that it age for changing. me, you know, it was it was like a bacon wala plan, you know. Like I didn't know what was behind those walls, behind those buildings. Yeah, sorry, Shri, show it to you. is changing but you're right but yeah no no kitki you're right the way the way we are navigating today with the uh, with the map and with the apps and things like that is a, is a very different mode of uh, uh, actually creating a perception of a city you know like even if we go to a small town uh, uh, um, uh, us who are sort of privileged with technology and the phone okay our first instinct is to now go to the phone and immediately look at the map and then try to figure out and things like that Uh, i mean that that joy of asking people is now in is a different kind of a asking that happens you know we we show the map to people and we say ye idhar kaise pahunchte hai you know yahan to rasta nahi hai map mein to dikha raha hai okay and then they'll tell you no no this is not there is no road over here it got, got yeah. closed away long time back you have to go around and think so yeah so that is also changing how we are actually creating perceptions of our uh, of our cities very interesting Yes, it's no, it's not visual at all, right? It is completely dependent on this technology mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah, yeah. Google Earth actually radically changed our lives when we were in school, you know, because it came towards the end of our uh, uh, end of our uh, sort of schooling, and uh, we yeah. were like, man, what all they make us do? If only we had this, you know, we could have <laughs> like. we were made to like like create models of cities which to like you know large scale models bring in go look at photographs heights of buildings everything and google earth as an image offers so much more more for information now so that but 
So that's also another way of uh, uh, generating the, 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 the perception and another way of sort of, uh, uh, what do I say, uh, challenging the perceptions, you know, like what we are seeing from the Google Earth and what the perception is from ground, okay? And, and that for, for this, for these students, that is really the exercise, you know, uh, in many ways. Yeah, okay. All right, shall we take a break? Uh, for a yeah, few minutes. Uh, I think, uh, uh, guys, uh, 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 for the students, uh, you guys can join to your channels at around, say, 11, 15 or 11, 20. And the teachers, let us let us meet in the in the channel first at around 11 and have a have a quick conversation. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. Paul, Arijit, uh, Aditya. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. sure. Let's yes. talk because okay. we need we need to we need to yeah. uh, we need to update you guys on what's happening in their AD as well a little. Sure. Bit yeah. and okay. uh, uh, and then we should actually uh, uh, map out the trajectory for UD very clearly now. Yeah. So we we meet at eleven, 11 and the students can join at eleven twenty in their channels. Yeah. Is that okay? And I need channel, a, a yes from one of the students. Faculty channel. We can. Uh, we have not created a faculty channel here no. yet, we but we can meet in the general channel, channel only. We have. Yeah. Uh, no, there is Do no we have a faculty channel. Should we create quickly? Okay, so we meet in the general channel. Uh, no, no, don't create it. So okay. we'll, we'll, if the students join, we'll remove them. Students have to join in their respective channels. Yeah, I have downloaded the attendance. It's already. Okay. 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 Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kitty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.